So what if I told you in this very moment I was burning fat? And what if I told you right now that I'm burning less fat? The reason I show you that is because burning fat and losing fat are two different things often very commonly intertwined in the fitness industry. So when people have these discussions of how much cardio they should be having for fat loss and probably monthly I remind people that you can lose fat in a coma. Although no, I would not recommend that as a method for fat loss. So whenever I'm asked about cardio as well with fat loss, my answer is to do as much as you can, but you also don't need to do any at all. Now, if we want to get all sciencey for a second, let me put a graph up here. And you'll notice the more intense exercise is, the more carbohydrates we will burn. And it's often at rest or at very low intensities that we use more fat as a fuel source. So does that make cardio bad for fat loss? No, because fat loss and burning fat or even fat utilization are very different things. And the most important take home point of this whole video is this, we do not do cardio to burn fat. We can do cardio to elicit more spending. I want you to imagine for a second that the amount of fat you have is like a bank account. I want us to see it more like money. And if there was more coming in than there was going out, you would be in a positive cash flow balance and this would increase over time. And that represents when we gain weight. If your bank account balance wasn't increasing, you'd be pretty pissed off at your bank. However, if we reduce the amount coming in, known as creating a calorie deficit, and we increase the amount going out, over time, this will shrink. So when it comes to fat loss, it can seem kind of counterintuitive to just think cardio is the way to elicit fat loss when reducing the amount of calories coming in, we could implement one of many strategies, whether it be skipping breakfast, whether it be counting calories, whether it be whatever. And when it comes to increasing the amount of calories and the amount of spending that we're doing on a daily basis, sure, we can use cardio, but we can also use other things like increasing a step count, increasing our frequency of weight training. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, James, why do you always bash cardio? I don't bash cardio. I just know that every single person that wants to lose fat probably has enough motivation to do cardiovascular exercise on its own for maybe three weeks and they might get really excited and buy themselves a treadmill or a spin bike or a rowing machine. They'll put it in their garage and say, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna do half an hour every single day till the day I die and three weeks later, they realize that they cannot sustain that because they do not enjoy it and they do not like the numb bum they get from the rowing machine and every time they look at it, it makes them feel kind of physically ill. And they never do it again. It's important that we understand that cardio is not something that we need to see as a prerequisite for fat loss, but merely a tool that we can use because some people enjoy cardio. They enjoy a game of squash with their friends. They enjoy playing a bit of sport, but there are some people that hate it. My parents, for example, if I said to my mum and dad, hey, if you did steady state cardio every day, you could increase your lifespan by 15 years. They would never in a million years partake in any form of cardio. So what I do now is I will explain exactly where you should position cardio within your world for fat loss. First of all, plan your week. Now you want to resistance train ideally two or three times a week. And I want you to imagine this a bit like baking a cake. The days of the weeks are the ingredients. Your resistance training is baking it. Because the point I want to make clear is you can actually have a pretty good cake without icing, like a Victoria sponge. Yeah, Victoria sponge. That could just be like a British cake, I don't really know, but there's my evidence. And for some people, personal preference, that is their favorite, most elite type of cake, right? So my point is it's better to start minimalist when we're designing fat loss protocols, right? From this, with the right calorie amount, anyone can lose fat, improve their health, improve their quality of life. They're still doing their resistance training sessions to help offset osteoporosis, offset sarcopenia, improve their bone health, improve everything, offset the chance of injury, literally everything, right? Cardio is not required, but as a benefit, cardio should be seen as icing for the cake as a finishing touch to already the foundations that are in place. And remember, cardio doesn't make the cake, it just makes the cake better. My favorite type of cake would be a red velvet, which would you'd struggle without icing on that, you really would. But if you make cardio your be all and end all as the thing that creates your calorie deficit, then when you fall off the train and don't want to do cardio anymore, you lose your deficit. But if you can make your cake in the realm of fat loss and exercise without cardio, with the sensible amount of calories, maybe a little bit of tracking here and there, then you can pick and choose your cardio a lot more. One week you might just think, I don't really want to do any cardio this week. Will that ruin your progress? No, it'll probably just slow it down a bit. And then as time goes on and you start seeing progress, you go, do you know what? I'm gonna change up my cardio a bit. Rather than jumping on the rowing machine or going for a run, I'm gonna invite a mate for a game of tennis. Or I'm gonna take my neighbor's dog for a walk. And the sooner that we can all understand that cardio does not equal fat loss, and it certainly doesn't equal fat burning, we can really come to the grips with designing a fat loss protocol that we enjoy, that we love, and that we could turn up to week on week for years. Cardio is not a chore, it's not a prerequisite. It's a component to our training that we can utilize, but it's icing on the cake. And when you see it as icing, you can start picking methods of it that you can probably find more enjoyable. When you find it more enjoyable, probably stay in your regime for quite a lot longer. And this hurts me to say it because I'm a proud man, but there's going to be an icon of a floating head here of a good looking blonde bastard. And if you'd subscribe to the channel, it'd make me feel better about uploading daily videos to help you lot out in a bit. Bye-bye.